Hello, welcome or welcome back. I'm Ari and today I'm going to do the mid-year book freak out tag that's starting to make its rounds because it's June and the year is halfway over. This is basically a tag with a bunch of questions and it kind of covers what you've read so far this year and then what you're planning to read this year um, in like a condensed summarized way. I've watched quite a few of these tags and I've seen a lot of different questions. I don't even remember whose questions I took so all the tags are a little bit different but this will be mine. I obviously stole it from somebody I don't even vaguely know who the original creator of this was years and years ago when it started, but credit to that person, definitely not an original idea. So question number one is the best book you've read so far in 2020. For me, Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Mirror. I really enjoyed this. I didn't actually expect to enjoy this, so I was pleasantly surprised. It's lesbian necromancers in space, which sounded like fun and funny, but I thought this was going to be like a throwaway, that was cute but stupid, no, this is literary genius, and I can't wait for Harrow the Ninth to come out, I think, next month? unless it got pushed because of corona, but soon. Soon TM. The next question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2020, and I honestly haven't read a whole lot of sequels. I think I've read like four total, and I've read like 106 books, so not a lot of sequels, but so far the best is The Toll by Neil Shusterman. This is the third book in the, I don't know what the name of this trilogy is, the Ark of Scythe trilogy, and it was a very wonderful conclusion to the trilogy. This is a, a futuristic dystopian world where, futuristic utopian world, where um, death has kind of been defeated, like people don't die, but humanity is still kind of concerned about overpopulation, so a group of people known as Sice are responsible for killing a small quota of people every season and basically keeping the population rates down um, while a computer runs like all of society, and humans think that the population needs to be decreased, but the computer is like, not really. <laughs> but it, it, part of its programming is to just let the humans do the stupid human shit that they want to with the scythe thing. Um, this series follows two apprentice scythe um, through their apprenticeship and everything to actually real scythedom, um, and then kind of the fall of a utopia into a dystopia, which all utopia books do. That, that, that's just the purpose of utopia books, is to show that the utopia actually is really stupid, and there's problems with it because people suck. The next question is a new release that you haven't read but you want to get to, and I'm assuming this just applies to anything released in 2020 as a new release. And for me, that is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This takes place uh, in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, which is a suburb of Charleston, and before I got the job that I have now. I used to live in Mount Pleasant, so I know all of the places that this takes place, and it's a horror book, and that sounds like stupid fun. So I really want to read this, I just haven't had a good excuse to throw it into my TBR yet. The next question is 
a new release or no the most anticipated release that hasn't released yet in 2020 and for me it's the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson I think I have yeah. Way of Kings right here is the first book in that so it's a, it's a thicky it's a thick book but the fourth book in this series comes out later this year Brandon Sanderson is by far my favorite author so obviously that's going to hit my number one most anticipated release and it's going to be a five star like I have no doubt in my mind that that is going to be a five star book for me I need to reread these before that comes out that's gonna suck <laughs> so more books that I have to fit into my TBR that I have no idea where I'm gonna fit them Next question is what is my biggest disappointment and this one was kind of hard because all of the books that I expected a lot out of were actually like really good. Um, most of the books I don't go into expecting a lot out of them so I'm not disappointed because I didn't expect them to be good. Uh, the ones that I've like really really hated so far I actually expected them to be bad going into them. Um, so the book that I chose for this is kind of a meh answer for this but it is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This book was a disappointment because it had a happy ending and I didn't expect it to and I really like books that don't have happy endings. I also expected this to be a whole hell of a lot darker than it was which I'm not sure why I expected because this is a young adult book not an adult book it's like middle grade young adult so it's obviously not going to be as dark as I expected it to be because it's for a younger audience but and between that and the happy ending at the end I was like eh, I wanted more number six is what is the biggest surprise book and for me that is Invisible Women by Caroline Creato Perez. I think her name's Caroline. Carolyn? Caroline? Um, this book is about like gender data bias and I expected to go into this book and just read a bunch of stuff about how women have it so bad and men have it so good and like everything sucks for women and men have it perfect but that's that's not what it is this is actually very scientific um, it's backed up with a lot of facts every single statement she makes she either cites it or uses the lack of data as a citation where if it's like people are doing a study about health and all of the people testing the drug are men, the citation would be the fact that they only tested it against men so there is no data for the medication tested on women, if that makes sense. But it's a amazingly written, very, very interesting scientific book. Again, I encourage any man to read this because holy shit you're going to learn how much privilege you actually have that you didn't even know about and I also think women should read this. Men need to read this book to learn from it. For women it's just kind of an interesting thing to read about so there you go. Number seven is favorite new to you author and this one was hard again because I won't consider like an author a favorite until I've read multiple books by that author and anything that I have read this year by multiple authors is something that like I've read books by them previously in previous years so they're not a new to me author or like with Gideon the Ninth, that's the only book I've ever read by Tamsin Muir, so I don't know if I just really love that one specific book or if I like her as an author. So I kind of have a default answer for this because this is the only new to me author that I've read this year with more than one book. 
I met is Edith Wharton, who this is classics. This is a bind up of three books and I've read two books in here. I have read um, The House of Mirth and The Age of Innocence and I gave House of Mirth five stars and Age of Innocence four stars. I loved both of these books. Um, this hits my weird I love depressing endings in books fetish. <laughs> so that's why I like uh, Edith Wharton. I think next year um, or maybe later this year I want to read the third bind up in here which is Custom of the Country and see if I continue loving her work or not. The next question, question number eight, is newest fictional crush. I don't really tend to get crushes on fictional characters. Uh, it's just not not my thing. But the person I am choosing for this, I love the relationship that he is in in the book. Um, I don't have a crush on him, but I have a crush on their relationship, and that is Cal from Aurora Rising. So, uh, slight spoilers, so if you want to not hear any spoils about Aurora Rising, skip to when I put the book down, but Aurora, or Cal is in love with Aurora, and he's an alien, and his species has a thing where they were like fated to love somebody like they have like one true mate and once they meet that mate they both know that's the end of the story and somehow Cal his mate sense thing goes off when he meets Aurora but Aurora is human and not part of his species and he doesn't understand why he's fallen in love or he's been mated to her um, when she's not even part of his species but he is so respectful about not putting pressure on her to be with him because it's just not her species or culture or whatever um, so he's head over heels in love with her, but he treats her like an equal and he doesn't put any pressure on her to be in a relationship with him. And I just really, really like that about his character. He can understand that just because he is fated to love her and only her, she is not fated to do the same. And it's her decision if she wants to be with him or not and to not pressure her into that decision. So. I really like that. I really liked his character. So that's my relationship crush I've got going on here. Question number nine is newest favorite character. And for that, I'm choosing Murderbot from All Systems Red. Uh, <laughs> what can I say? Murderbot is a sarcastic, non-binary, uh, android like human computer hybrid and is amazing it's sarcastic it's no nonsense it hates humans it's hilarious it just wants to watch soap operas all day and tell everybody in the world to fuck off and i loved martha wells writing of this character so much. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry and for this while a lot of books have made me cry a little bit I'm going to go with the book that made me cry the most and that was The Only Plane in the Sky which is a non-fiction uh, memoir I guess that's not the right word it's just a non-fiction like recounting of a bunch of different people's experiences during the September 11th 2001 um, terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the other plane that was hijacked and then crashed by the passengers. So it was depressing as you can imagine. Um, obviously a lot of people died, 
it was very hard to read. I cried like almost nonstop. Like by page three I was tearing up and I don't think I stopped until I got to the end of the book. And I like cried so much but couldn't stop reading that I got like crazy dehydrated the first day and then had a really bad dehydration headache all of the day after I read it. So it's an emotional book. I don't know that I can say that I could recommend it to anybody because it's so sad, but it was moving. Good is not a word because there was nothing good about the situation, but it was a very moving and powerful nonfiction book. Number 11, we're going on the other end of the spectrum and it is a book that made you happy. And while a lot of books made me happy this year, um, I'm going to choose Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. This is a graphic novel and it's about two boys. Uh, one of them is gay and the other one is questioning and it's their high school boys but it's a British school so it's called something not high school um, but they meet and they kind of fall in love and then it's kind of a exploration of their friendship building into a relationship and I really thought this was adorable and sweet and cute and it made me happy when I was reading it so there you go Next is the most beautiful book I purchased this year and the most beautiful book I purchased this year is actually a book I read last year but I just bought a really pretty cover of it and I bought this specifically because I wanted this cover and that is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern and this is the UK edition of the book which is completely amazingly gorgeous. This is such a pretty cover and I bought this specifically because of how pretty this is. So that was... that was an easy answer even though I didn't actually read this book this year. I still bought it this year. And the final question that we have is number 13. Name a book that you need to read by the end of the year and for that I am going to say House of Earth and Blood, the first book in Crescent City by Sarah J. Maas. Um, at the end of the year I do a challenge to read the top 10 nominations in the Goodreads Choice for Fantasy and I can almost guarantee you that this book is going to be in there so I need to get it read before the end of the year um, and hopefully before that list even comes out so I have more time to finish the books in that list if I like preemptively read the books that I think are going to be on that list and this is one of them. This is one of them and then the um, Lightbringer book is going to be another one that I think is going to be on that list. That one I would have read anyway as soon as it came out but this one I don't know that I would have ever picked up if it wasn't, if I didn't think that it was going to be on that list. So. But there you go. That is my mid-year book freakout tag. If you have read any of these books that I haven't read or you have other recommendations for me, please drop them down in the comments. If you've done this tag already, I am so enjoying watching other people do it. So if you've done it, drop that down in the comments so I can watch your video. And I'll see you in the next one.